Hey guys, how's it going? Paul Harris here. Welcome back to another one of my videos. Today we're talking about how you can create a set of accounts for a small business within Excel. So for background, I started a PwC and I became a qualified accountant. Whilst I was doing that, I started a wedding photography business on the side. And as a result, I prepare a set of accounts. I do all the tax for that, etc. All the things that are related to running a limited company. So I thought it'd be useful to talk about how I prepare the set of accounts without using any sort of fancy software just using Excel. Now, I'm going to split this into two parts. The first part, which is what I'm going to talk about today, is going to be all the pre-work you need to do to get started in setting up those accounts. So if you're starting from scratch or you just want to learn how to pre prepare a set of accounts, you're going to need to obviously format it all, which is going to be the second part and drag in all the figures. But the first part is going to be all the pre-work needed to prepare those sets of accounts. Now, what I'm going to go over in this video obviously has a lot of accounting terminology so there's an assumption here that you have some accounting background. If you don't, uh, then it's uh, this video is not about going from zero accounting knowledge to prepare a set of accounts. You're going to have to have some knowledge, but assuming you do and you don't want to have to fork out a lot of money in order to uh, pay for some software or pay for an accountant and you think you have enough knowledge as is to fill in the gaps of what I'm explaining, then this should be a good start. So as I said, this is going to be part one, which is going to be the pre-work to setting up your set of accounts. So hopefully you enjoy it. If you want to stay tuned, see the whole section of the video, part one and part two, subscribe to my channel, like this video. Let's get into it. As I said, I um, do wedding photography on the side. And as a result, I've prepared a set of accounts that very much lend itself to the sort of business that I produce now. But it should depending on what kind of business you have, maybe you're setting up a set of accounts, maybe you're just interested about how you create a set of accounts in Excel and some of the details, then this should hopefully be useful. But just as a caveat, obviously, because that's what the business I'm in, that some of these uh, details might lend itself more to that's running of that kind of business. So the first place you want to start without even getting into Excel is you need to create a set list of transactions. Now, when you work for a company or you're producing a set of accounts in a, in a larger business, uh, or if you're using accounting software, you have to still enter in all the transactions. And where the transactions usually sit is in something called a general ledger. Now, the way you enter those transactions is either through a journal. So you say, I want to, you know, debit my debtors, credit my revenue uh, like that. Or you enter in a transaction and maybe they add up all the transactions at the end and add them to your operating expenses. And obviously there's a double entry going on with all these different transactions. So the first place you need to start with Excel, and as you can see here, is I've created tabs. Revenue is one tab, transactions is the other tab. Now, within those tabs, you obviously need to document all the transactions that have occurred within that financial year. So if your account is start at the 1st of October to the 3rd of September, like these ones will, the easiest way that I see to do this is to put down all the transactions in your business and allocate them to a specific year, depending on when your financial year is. And that's what I've done here. Now, bear in mind as well, although this is a template based off my set of accounts, I've changed a lot of the detail uh, in terms of the values and the revenue and the costs, just to give you a, a template. And obviously it doesn't have my company account number and all the rest of it. So what you have here is a basic template. I've just said each wedding I've done or whatever the revenue line is that you're doing within your business, I've allocated to say, okay, it's the thousand pound. And you can see here, I've documented there's basically 13 uh, revenue lines. And I've said that in the financial year 2020 or 2021, as you can see here, they, these are all the revenues. So that's the first place that I would start in creating set of accounts. The next is transactions. Now, as I say, with the caveat of the kind of business, you can see some of these costs here are more applicable to the sort of business that I run. So but what you can see I've done here is created a whole list of different costs that have occurred to me throughout the year that relate to running this kind of business, because obviously they need to be allowable costs. So here you have sort of Amazon purchases for equipment. You have things like different website costs, insurance costs, uh, you know, other website, like the development of a website. You have things relating to editing equipment related to the working. You have, you know, Microsoft Office other types of reports based, again, that relate to the business. And I've just created a list down here, and I'll get on to what these ones are uh, at the bottom in terms of depreciation, travel, and use of home office, because that's a separate uh, point that's 
quite interesting. So the more detailed you can be, the better, because uh, the next step is to pivot all this data. Now, as part of creating this list, uh, you can see here on column F, it says assets, cost of sale, operating expenses. And really that's just a reference for me, because when you pivot the data, you can then just isolate what the costs were in a given year. You can see here in column G, the financial year in which they've occurred. So I'm preparing a set of accounts here for 2020, um, but obviously you might have tr transactions from 2019, 2020, 2021. But in this report here, I just have 2020. And, and then on the left-hand side on column B, you can see that I've put a description of what they relate to. So subscriptions, sundry expenses, insurance, and all this, all this becomes relevant later on down the line uh, with what I show you. Um, and then you have advertising costs and you want to subcategorize these. Now, another column which is important is column E. And here I've said if it's a cash purchase or whether the expense relates to an accounting adjustment. So when I scroll down, you can see here depreciation, I've written accounting. That also is relevant. So you need to say whether the transaction, the cost that's incurred within this list relates to something you're calculating in relation to an accounting adjustment or whether it's actual hard cash that's left your account. The other, only other factor here that you would want to bear in mind that I haven't is as running of my, the kind of business I've run, which is the wedding photography, everything's cash and every transaction I make is a direct cash, nothing's on credit. So I don't have within this set of accounts um, like a debtor list because I, I just don't need it. So that's a complication that's been taken out. So. That's the next step is you wanna have your costs and you wanna allocate them down. So if you do have, uh, for instance, if we go back to the revenue, all this is cash for me that's come in. But if, if for instance, you have something in, if you're saying owed different amounts, what you'll wanna do is the subcategory here for whether it's uh, cash or whether it's you know money that's still owed to you at the end of the year and all that becomes relevant again later on. So that's the first step. The next step, as I said, and the reason why you wanna be detailed is you wanna start creating a file for all your workings uh, meaning when you pivot all the data and you start to create all the balances that you'll need later on that you think are relevant to your business. So as you can see here, I've created a pivot for revenue that says, you know, how much revenue I've earned in 2019, how much I've earned in 2020, that relates to the revenue tab. Now, of course, if part of this is where, if you had a debtor, so some of this money was still owed to me at the year end, and it wasn't just cash in hand, for instance, then I would subcategorize this again into what's cash and what's a debtor, because uh, obviously later on when you prepare a new balance sheet, you're gonna need that. Then I have my costs, and you can see what I've allocated here as being an asset, what is a cost of sale, and what's an operating expense. So again, as you're probably astute somewhat to accounting, the assets are gonna sit within your fixed asset register, your cost of sale is gonna sit on your profit and loss account, and your operating expenses are gonna sit on your operating expenses. Now, fixed assets. So fixed assets is the next section, which is obviously gonna be for your notes section of your accounting report. And here you have, uh, the fixed assets carried over from last year. And that's an added bit that I've had as previous history. And the depreciation, um, I use a five year flat rate depreciation. So in year one, it would have been 2,000 pound. In year two, I've added on 5,000. Now it's the depreciation from the previous year and 1,000 from this year. And you can see how I'm breaking it down and breaking down the data into very easy, sizable chunks. That is going to be the source data for when I'm preparing my set of accounts. So I'm always gonna refer back to this workings page. And this is part of why I'm spending so much time discussing the first three tabs and not talking about the actual accounts themselves because you need to form a strategic way of when you're filling in the detail, you're not all over the place. And and that's, that's part of what an accounting software would show you, is that you put all the detail in and they've consolidated the information and it's just an easy way of sourcing the information. Now, that's what I'm doing by creating these steps and these stages. Obviously with the fixed assets, depreciation. Now, if you remember, if you go back to the transactions list, this is where there's a little bit of a circular reference, but I've added on depreciation as an expense within the transactions because against the revenue tab and the transactions tab, I want all the costs included there. I don't want to be adding on separately different different you know, factors later on. I want everything to be sitting within those two columns. Then you have balances that don't really sit within your transaction. So this is going to be how much cash you had at year end. Why is this important? Because 
The reason it's important is I prepare, obviously because this is such a small business, I mean, it's just a company account. I'm the only director, because you need to have, you need to set yourself up as a director when you start a, a business. And because I'm the only director, you know, you run the company slightly differently than say, you know, a business that you'd see, FTSE 100 company and all the rest of it. Like the way that I run this business is that, yes, I have a business bank account, but a lot of transactions, say Amazon expenses, might just come out of my own account. Now, in order to transact this, you need to set up something called a director's loan account within your finance financial statements. And the director's loan account is just to, uh, is when you pay with your own personal account, with your own personal card, and the business owes you money. Now, there's a lot of complications to this. And the main complication is there's specific rules if the amounts owed to you, uh, you're claiming that they need to pay interest on it. Now, I don't say that. This is literally just me holding an account in my own name. And then there's a business account for, say, where I collect the revenue from and if I have expenses, but really the costs are split against both accounts. So the cash, that's why that's relevant to see, the cash is uh, how much I had at the end of the financial year in the account. Again, these are all made up numbers. That's how much cash I'm saying I have at the end of the year. Then what I'm doing is creating a director's loan account section. So now there's probably lots of ways that you can prepare a director's loan account. Really for me, I use it to some degree as a balancing figure for the rest of my costs. So I know all my transactions transactions. I know how much cash I had at the end of last year. I know how much cash I have at the end of this year. The difference in this case is £500. I know that's how much the balance has increased. Now, if you think of all the charges, I'm going to have I'm going to have the revenue that I'm collecting money for. So that's straight to cash. I'm going to have my expenses. That's the money going out. Then I'm going to have any accrued costs at the end of last year that I've had to pay for. And this is where I'm all factoring in how much should sit within director's loan account. So how much money does the company owe me? Now, at the end of 2019, the company owed me £7,370. Now, if you factor in all the costs, which came to £12,545, you say that um, the cash that came in from the business account increased by £500, and you have design costs, which were accrued costs at the end of last year. So accrued costs being costs that you need to account for within the financial year, but you're not going to receive an invoice or payment pay for until the following year. So that money actually came through, that money needs to be paid this year. So that's another cost that's coming out within this financial year. That means that the total, the total amount, so the director's loan account plus all those expenses comes to £21,114. Now, the revenue that I received in the year was £13,000. So the net difference of £8,114 is how much should be sitting within the director's loan account. So that's how you sort of build it up. You want to be thinking, I thought of it, it was easier to do it that way than going through transaction by transaction and doing double entry. You can just do it at a much higher level when you're preparing a set of accounts for yourself and you can just pivot the data and it's just a lot simpler way in my in my view. So that's the director's loan account. Operating expenses, I've broken down because this is going to relate to the final note section which I'll get on to and this shows you know how the costs are split down into subcategories that you can present as a more detailed income statement at the end. Then you have other specific kind of costs that you can account for uh, when you're running your own business. So if you have a car payment, there's two ways you can account for this within your financial statements. You can either account for it using a mileage method where you can claim 45p per mile for all travel expenses, business related, up to 10,000 miles. And then the amount decreases to, I think, 25p, but I don't do 10,000 miles. The other way you can account for this is by literally uh, using the a car lease expense as a allowable deduction from your account. But I think the way you have to do this is then by claiming that as a payment in kind, as a salary salary to yourself. So the way, the simplest way of doing it from, in my mind is just to be claiming 45p for every mile I traveled relating to doing phot wedding photography. And you can see how this has come out as uh, £585 within this financial year. Um, pretty simple calculation there. You just take how many miles you've traveled and times it by 0.45. The next uh, cost you can use, because I use my house as a home office, is you can effectively uh, deduct, depending on how many hours you spend each month working relating to your business in your own home. And this is how it's split down. If you're working up, up to 50 hours, you can claim £10 a month. Uh, I've said here, 100, over 101 hours a month, you can claim £26, 12 months, £312. And if we go back to the transaction section, you can see here then I've added on all these transactions. Now, the only cost that I've said is an accounting adjustment. So one that, you know, the cost of buying equipment 
is the cash I pay for, say, the camera or the stands and the lighting and all that. But the cost you actually occur within your P&L is going to be obviously the depreciation, which is seen as a, a fixed a flat line five year fee. So that's the first part of preparing your set of accounts is by creating that general ledger and doing all the workings that are going to now feed into your financial statements. Okay, so that's going to be part one of preparing your set of accounts is creating the general ledger. Now, the reason I'm splitting it down into part one and part two is, is because I just realized how much longer it's going to take to explain. Uh, so it's taking quite a long time to explain part one, which is the general ledger and how to start doing all the pre-work before preparing the set of accounts. So I'm going to make another video now, which I go through and how I allocate all the costs to the different areas of the profit and loss and to the notes, et cetera, et cetera, and show you the template that you can use to pull in these numbers that you've just created. So that's going to be part one of this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, like this video. I'll see you for part two, where we're talking about how we can move these costs into the actual financial statements. See you later.